My name is Jess Emery. I teach English as a second language, also sometimes referred to as ELL for English language learning. What if I want to know where the city of Delhi is? Can I find that on this map? Yeah. The reason I like AVID strategies is because in general they're not that different than things I would have been doing for best practice teaching, mm -hmm. but AVID, the program of AVID frames them in a way that I think is really easy to understand and really easy to fit into things you are already going to be teaching. The AVID curriculum gives us five specific strategies within the reading process. The acronym for it is peanut butter pie, P-B-P-I-E. The P is for prompt, the B is for building vocabulary, the P is for pre-reading, the I is for interacting with the text, and the E is for expanding beyond the text. So the prompt step, the first step in the reading process is getting students thinking about the topic that will be read about. So you could give students a topic to do a quick write about. So they respond to a question that you've put up on the board and they write for five minutes or two minutes or three minutes. Just getting, getting the juices flowing about the topic. The prompt is a really important thing that we can do to narrow their focus before the students read. It can be done in a free write, maybe a partner conversation or a large group discussion, but it should center around something to do with what they're going to be reading and what we want them to pull out while they're reading that text. The B is for building vocabulary. Now this is a really important area of study because too often our students get hung up on words they don't know and as a result their comprehension struggles. So we need to take a few moments before we read to pick out four or five words that are going to uh, cause our students struggles and identify them define them and make sure our students know them when they're reading that text. And these words are identified by sometimes by the teacher before reading or sometimes they're just key, key words that the students might not know like in a social studies text. If you understand the word, if you know the word, what it means and how to use it, you can put a check mark, okay? But if you get to a word or a term that you don't know or you don't know how to use it, you can write a question mark, okay? So go through all of the words. So just take a few minutes. City. I'll put that in quotation marks. So on a chat. Pre-reading is um, looking at the text from sort of, I like to think of it as a like a bird's eye view. So you're not actually reading the text. Um, you are looking at the things that surround the text. Pre-reading is where we identify what the title is, if there's headings or subheadings, any bold words perhaps found within an article. We also like to identify the author to make sure we're identifying if there's a, going to be a bias found within the article. The idea behind this is to introduce the things that surround text before you read the actual text. Interacting with the text. Now this covers a broad array of things. We number our paragraphs before we read. We circle key terms. We maybe underline author's claims. We definitely summarize right on the article in maybe 20 or 25 words the, the main idea of that article. The idea of this step is that it focuses the student on the interactive process of reading and not just something that they're passively doing. So circling things, highlighting things, thinking of it as a stop and start kind of process where you can read something again if you didn't catch a sentence and go back and underline a word that you realize was important after you've continued to read. Writing in the margins, um, circling a certain number of keywords, and so the idea of this step is that it, it focuses the student on the interactive process of reading and not just something that they're passively doing. The last step is expanding beyond the text. Now this is great to have uh, a conversation about the text with your classmates, perhaps a written reflection or even a, a longer paper. So if you are giving students something to read, like a textbook or a chapter, an article, a website, something that you could do that would be pretty effective, I think, is to model these five strategies first before, like as a whole class, before giving students an assignment or giving them something to read. Model the five steps, go through it with them in sort of a scaffolded, maybe simplified way, and explain to them how they could do it while they're reading on their own. Now we should be using these strategies whenever we get the chance um, because they are proven to help students retain what they read. When they're reading their textbooks, a novel, even an article that is passed out in class, following these steps can be key to helping them retain what they're reading and become more confident in their reading abilities. 
By following these five key steps, we can help our students become more confident in their reading ability and also help them to comprehend and retain more of what they read, which will obviously make them much better students in the classroom.